Welcome to episode six of this weekly cupping. And what I do with this is I cup through every single one of our single origin coffees that are either roasted and ready for sale or are going to be roasting throughout this week. Each of these cupping series are relevant only to the week commencing, and today's is the week commencing the 21st of October. So without further ado, I'll get straight into the cupping and I'll discuss each of the coffees, what their flavor profiles are, and maybe how I think you should brew them at home. So the first on the table is our decaf, the Lala Salama. This is rose 25784 uh, from Wednesday last week, and and what we have here is lots of orange and there's some hazelnut. It's really creamy. It's very, very well balanced. There's a tickle of acidity, but not too much. It's sweet. It's almost not discernible as a decaf. This would preferentially be brewed as a brewed coffee versus an espresso. There you'll be able to pick up all of the nuance of the coffee itself. However, it will work as an espresso as well. Next in line is the Pantano. I roasted this last week. Uh, this is batch number 25790. This is a single origin, but it also features within our core coffee range as well. So those are the coffees that I have all year round based on a larger volume purchase of each of the origins. So this is exactly as I want the coffee to be. Lots of nuts, hazelnuts, milk chocolate, a little nudge of orange acidity in there. This is a very well balanced yellow bourbon from Brazil. This coffee represents what I would describe as our gateway coffee. So if you're coming to the brand from outside of speciality coffee, this is a fantastic starting point. It gives you a soup son of of what delicious coffee can be without all of the weird and wacky esoteric flavor profiles that some of these other ones will present to you. Next in line is the Segundus, and this was a release a couple of weeks back for our coffee subscribers. Again, this is lovely and creamy. There's a nudge of autumnal fruits, purple and red fruits like cherry and plum, like a Victoria plum, lovely sweetness. There's a touch of nut in the expression of walnut and then a dark chocolate. But the dark chocolate isn't bitter, it's very crisp and precise. It is a lovely balance throughout this cup. This would be an excellent example of a brewed coffee or cafetiere coffee. If you enjoy AeroPress, this would be great for you as well. It is a lovely 50-50 balance between polite fruits and then rich dark chocolates on the finish. Next is La Balsa and like Pantano, this is a core product. It is one that we have all throughout the year and its flavors are wonderful, bright red and black cherry. Stone fruits, but lovely acidity in there. A very, very defined and pronounced sweetness and then a rich chocolate on the finish as well. Much like the Segundus, this is a beautiful 50-50 coffee. If you like some fruit, but you also want texture and body, La Balsa's for you. This is an incredibly versatile coffee. You can brew it in all apparatus. Just be mindful that in espresso, you might get a little spike of acidity uh, based on its ro roast profile. That was 25745, uh, roasted from the ninth. So this is actually a couple of weeks settled, and that, this is when the coffees really begin to open up. 14 days, 21 days post-roast is really when the coffees begin to sing. So next in line is the La Pastora. Uh, this is roast 25782. Uh, this was the release uh, on Saturday for our subscribers and broadly to the, uh, the retail side of the business. This is also the first honey process coffee that I've roasted on the Loring, and I've done a little description of this actual roast uh, in another video that I'll probably link towards the end of this one. Uh, flavor expectations are stone fruits, there's a little bit of raspberry, there's some orange in there, very sweet, creamy, there's like this nougat and marshmallow characteristic. You can definitely get that on the nose if you take whole beans and grind. Um, it's sweet, it's well balanced. It's a really, really pleasant brew. Um, suitable for all methods of brewing. I'd even say that this would be good for espresso as well even though that the roast profile that I've designed is very much leaning into filter-based coffee. When I say filter-based coffee, I mean every brew method but 
espresso. However, this will work as espresso too. So next in line is the San Lorenzo. We've only got run, one roast left of this, and this particular roast is 25689 from the 2nd of October. Uh, so again, two weeks off roast, and I hope we'll be really beautifully opening up now. Which it is. Now, if you like citrus fruits, San Lorenzo is the one for you. Clementine, um, Seville orange, it's bright, it's effervescent. There's lots and lots of orange-based citrus characteristics. There is then a toffee, caramelly, syrupy sort of sweetness and then a rich dark chocolate. So it's all of the acidity and all the body together into a coffee. I'd probably not have this espress as espresso because it'd be quite bright. Although some people enjoy youthful espresso, so why not give it a go? I would prefer this in AeroPress or filter back, batch filter or hand brew, cafetiere, that sort of thing. Now, last on the list is roast 25796 of the Magotti Hill. This is the last batch of this. Uh, this was from last week. 16th of October, so a week off roast. Let's have a taste. So with this, there's lots of brown sugar. There's like red berries. Um, it's lovely and bright. It's a light roast with a light body. So if you like coffees that are open and uh, without body, without that sort of base notes, Magotti Hill is the one for you. It's a really fine example of washed uh, Bourbons from uh, Burundi. Uh, so do give that a go. It is the last chance saloon for this coffee. Now, uh, we are under eight minutes in time. This has been uh, the overview of the coffee this week. So week commencing the 21st of October. Um, to recap, if I was going for espresso, I would do Pantano, I'd possibly do La Pastora. If I wanted to do brewed coffee, so that is everything but espresso, I would go Segundus, La Balsa, San Lorenzo and Magotti Hill. If I wanted to be autumnal, go Segundus and La Balsa. If I wanted to go citrus and bright, go San Lorenzo and Magotti Hill. So I hope this overview has been useful. I use these to be able to better inform people who are looking to purchase coffee from us on a weekly basis. I send people this way. Uh, if you have any questions, do get in touch. Uh, other than that, I'll see you again next week for next week's cupping. Cheers.